How would you go about simulating a virtual ecosystem? Specifically, how would you make the creatures act as lifelike as possible to truly bring the world around you to life? In this devlog, we are going to be covering the brilliant behavioural systems that form the simulated ecosystems within the Alien Biosphere's game, Tira Deep in the Wild. We'll be starting off with the creatures, specifically how they act within the game. It will be hard to give a plain explanation of how these creatures function, but for the purposes of this video, I will simplify it to an extent. But to start off, all entities have an enumeration variable, basically a large table of data, containing names for different entities to be detected. Predators. Ouch! Oh, alright. Well first off, the entity types that can be assigned are Threat, Prey, Parent, Offspring, Rival, Mate, and Other. A good thing to note is that the creature itself does not have an entity type assigned to it. The assigning happens within the actor, basically within the entity's brain, doing the detecting, and not on the one that's getting detected, except for parents, which is assigned on the offspring actors. Parent, containing an array of parent actors that exist for the offspring actors. Offspring, the detected actor is assigned this only if a reference to itself exists in the parent's array. Theoretically, an actor can have as many parents as the array variable allows for. Rival Assigned to detect if an entity is a possible rival, only if the entity is the same species and same sex, and in the array of detected rivals on the detector actor. Mate Assigned when detecting possible actors as mates, if the actor is of the same species and opposite sex. Threat Adds detected actors to an array of detected threats, if the detected actor ID exists in a list of possible threats. Prey adds a detected actor to an array of detected prey, only if the detected actor's ID exists in the list of prey. Other includes the sounds of unknown origin. Detected actor is assigned as other if no other criteria is met. Also, it's good to note that the entity types can be changed at runtime on a per individual basis. For example, if attacked by a creature assigned as Other, it can be changed to Threat. The response types can also be changed the same way. For example, if a species has the entity response set to Rival and Passive, when mating season is enabled, the response can be changed to Rival Aggressive. Same goes for mates. If response is set to Passive, ignore. Aggressive or anything else, it changes the courtship. If courtship is always enabled, the creatures will always try to mate with each other. These data tables are then supported by a table of possible responses. This large data table would contain responses such as skittish, curious, aggressive, threaten, defensive, passive, friendly, and courtship. The responses are then paired with an entity for easy input of variation in behaviours. They are the base for almost all behaviour and responses you see within the game. But behind the scenes, each entity has a coded sensor that starts the execution of several functions on when another entity has been seen or heard. When something is detected, a signal is sent to the detected entity that asks for its required data, such as its size, species, base threat level, sex, age, and entity type. For sounds that from a previously undetected source, the other entity value is used. Based on this returned data, the AI determines what kind of entity the given actor is, based on just a few of these specific factors. In fact, every species has a pre-made array featuring species IDs of threats and prey. Imagine that you have a small local bestiary, where local creature data is stored. Now, if included in a given array, the entity for the detected creature is given an appropriate entity value. In case the creature has a higher value in size and or threat values, aggression, they might get changed to threat even though the ID exists in the prey array. This is of course to simulate an expected reaction, like if a powerful and strong herbivore such as a rhino on earth suddenly appeared near a group of gazelles, the gazelles would run regardless since rhinos are still massive and can be a threat, so the prey would recognise in their array as a threat, same goes here. Now it's also key to mention that the database also includes a list of offspring and parents which is used to determine those entities too. To visualise it logically, here's an approximation of the code. If target entity offspring array contains self, set entity type to parent. 
Same goes for entity types mate and rival. If entity species equals own sex and target entity sex equals own sex, set entity type to rival. Else, set entity type to mate. What this ultimately represents is just how the parents and children exist within the system, along with the programmed aggression against entities labelled as rivals, and programmed recognition of any creatures that would be suitable mates. Any actor detected that does not get assigned an entity type, based on the previous statements, will be given the type Other. After the entity type has been determined, the creature selects a response based on the response inum value given in the data table. Example, threat, aggressive. If an entity is regarded as a threat, use the aggressive response. Aggressive responses feature different functions depending on some factors like health and species aggressiveness. If health is below a certain percent and aggressiveness is lower than 80%, the target will be ignored or even cause the creature to run away depending on the target's threat level. Activating one of these behaviours within a given response type will fire off a series of other functions such as move to target, select attack type and play attack animation to portray to the player that said creature is on the attack. Interestingly, response and entity types can be changed on an individual basis during gameplay. In case an entity listed as other attacks the AI, it will change the entity type to threat and respond accordingly. All detected entities are stored on an individual basis too, in an array of detected entities. A separate array also exists for potential prey. Now that covers how most creatures detect and respond to other creatures, but when it comes to creature behaviour, and mostly alone, we can see that for most herbivores, they get pretty simple feeding functions. Every 5 seconds, the hunger value is checked to see if an AI requires food and sustenance. A herbivore will check if standing on grass, and if true, play the feeding animation. Pretty simple and straightforward. However, for carnivores, when hungry, they will check an array of detected prey to find the closest prey available, and then initiate attack functions alongside the run function. Escaping AI responds by finding a random location from a certain distance to a threat in the opposite direction of it. A fully terrestrial species will detect water as an obstacle, and thus try to find a way around it. Though in case a location was not found anywhere that is not in water, in a given amount of attempts, they will panic and resort to swimming away from the threat. That summarizes the basic behavioural systems in Tier Deep in the Wild. There is way way more to talk about when it comes to the possible extra responses when it comes to the AI, but this video is getting much longer than I expected. But I will say I've been an awe and inspiration of the work of our main developer Bob Popo, and I also thank our fellow dev members for their casual help as well, especially our supporting 3D modeler who's made this amazing render of this sus rock. In the next devlog we'll be covering the progress and fate of our other projects alongside a more general progress summary for Tier Deep in the Wild. And hey, remember, please make sure to subscribe. It really helps the channel out, and together we can make an empire of Tira gamers. A final note is that this channel will be having a bit of a hiatus, you could say. Don't worry, Tira Deep in the Wild will still be worked on, but there'll be some time before another upload. Thank you all, and I'll see you all in the next devlog. He is the Ascended One.